Uh, this is Roy Eckhold from uh, Hagley Museum and Library. Uh, we're going to go and continue with our gingerbread. Uh, last time we went over cutting the templates, now we're moving ahead to make the gingerbread pieces. This is the gingerbread recipe. Flour, cinnamon, ground ginger, salt, put them in a bowl, combine them. On the stove we'll heat these three ingredients, we'll add them together, mix it, and we'll go. Now we're going to start by combining the dry ingredients. These are the dry ingredients that you saw in the recipe. Into the bowl. You should use a dough, a dough hook. I don't particularly have one, so I'm just going to use a beater. In, in this particular application, it's not going to make that much of a difference. I'm going to turn this on very slow, and it sort of served to combine the ingredients for me. In the pot, a cup of margarine, a cup and a half of dark syrup. I use Caro. Cup and a quarter of brown sugar. You always pack brown sugar when you measure it. Don't sprinkle it in like flour. Pack it. Cup and a quarter. That's how, when they do recipes, that's how they measure. The reason you use margarine and not butter is because margarine doesn't spoil as fast as butter. Butter will go rancid on you. Margarine is strictly oil and it'll, it'll last forever. And a lot of times in these houses, they're up for months. And so that's what you do. Okay. The reason we run this again on slow is because causes it to mix well and aerate, which is what you want for a nice dough. That's the, essentially the same as sifting it, but because we have time, we're just going to run this on slow and it runs. All right, here's our here's our mix that we melted. We dissolved the, uh, the brown sugar in the dark syrup, added the margarine. Now we're going to add this to this, and slowly. This is going to get incredibly thick and strain your mixer, so be real careful with it. And you don't blow the thing up. Add this a little at a time. And we'll lift it up a little bit. Keeps it from taking it all at once. So we're going to drop it back down a little bit. Put another, probably the second third in there. Lift it up a little bit at a time. Struggle. And then we're going to drop it down and add the last of it in. Then we'll just slowly add it, bring it up into it so that it slowly dissolves the flour. You don't need to mix this like cookies or anything because nobody's really eating it. You just need to get it mixed so that it's consistent all the way through. It's a little bit loose on the edges, so I'm going to run it just another minute. All right, that's enough. We're going to take this out of the bowl. It's a little crumbly, a little, uh, still a little warm. It's still a little dry on the bottom. So we're going to mix this a little bit by hand. While it's still warm, it's easy to do this. Let me tell you, when this gets room temperature or cold, it's like concrete. So you must do this while it's warm. Okay, that's pretty good. We're going to cover this with a little plastic and we're going to let it cool maybe maybe an hour or so. And then we'll let it, it just let it, lets the flour relax. And we'll put it in the refrigerator for an hour. 